What's up everyone, Tom here, and today we're going to look at open source and how the original idea of freely sharing knowledge is getting watered down more and more. And this is a problem. 3D printing as we know it today is based on the RepRap project, which is an initiative by Professor Adrian Bauer and his colleagues, where they started out by just providing a bare minimum set of tools to the public, as in a few working 3D printer designs, some software, electronic schematics, and some documentation with the goal of setting it all free into the wild and having it evolve out there by users making changes and just seeing which approaches would stick and which ones would disappear. It's as much of an experiment on evolution as it was on 3D printing. And if you look at what 3D printers look like today, one could argue that it's been working out very well. For example, the original triangular frame of the cells mantle has practically disappeared because it was difficult to build and not very rigid. However, things like stepper motors and the Arduino-based electronics are still very present. How is this all possible? Because RepRap focused on the machines being able to make as many of the parts for their offspring as possible, which is why 3D printers so commonly use 3D printed parts, and because open source. Now, if we take a step back, what does open source even mean? Basically, for, for any product, whether that's software or hardware, there's always the finished thing, which is the physical product or the program or an app that runs on your computer or phone, but both of those are built from a source. For software, that's the actual source code, the program code. For hardware, that's typically CAD files today. Without these, the product you have is just a black box. Sure, you can take hardware apart, but you won't be able to build a better version of it for yourself or for others. You'll just have to use it as the manufacturer made it, and especially for more complex systems, you have very little of a chance of even trying to understand how these things work. So that is the very technical description of things, but really it boils down to this. Open source to me means sharing what you're doing and how you do it um, as, as a philosophy. Yes, there's different definitions of open source for different applications, like software has a kind of different definition for hardware, but it's the, 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 the philosophical concept of a source and then the product and the source being what you require to reproduce that product. So I went around the TCT show and asked a bunch of companies all the same questions. This first one was simply, what does open source mean to you? Like, are we even in the same boat here? To me, open source means developing products in a collaborative way so that you're engaging the community and essentially building products that uh, users can understand how they work and make modifications if they want. The word open source, there is a, actually a definition of it. Um, um, I'm not uh, open source like in a religious way. Um, I'm open and, and my company is open in a practical way uh, that we think we need to share um, uh, to be able to accelerate innovation in the whole uh, space around us. And sometimes that even uh, includes uh, accelerating our uh, competitors. But I think by being open is, uh, is, is, is important for all of us. Now, Ultimaker's point here is interesting. They're not a true open source company anymore. They've not published source files for their flagship product, the Ultimaker 3 yet, but they do still release other products like the Cura software for free and completely as open source. Hey, it's Editing Tom from the future. So Ultimaker got in touch with me regarding the release of the files for the Ultimaker 3. So as it turns out, just next Thursday, October 18th, they are going to release files for the Ultimaker 3. That is exactly one year after the original hardware was announced. Um, it's going to be a step format, so an exported exchange format, not the original CAD files, but something that everyone can open, um, licensed under a Creative Commons share-alike non-commercial license. Ultimaker say they're, they're waiting that full year to make sure they're getting the value out of the development effort they put in, and I can see how it would be a bit more for the Ultimaker 3 than it was for previous machines. It does still feel like a bit of an Alibi move, waiting that full year and then going with a non-commercial license. But, well, it's, it's something, I guess. Back to the video. And even with the Ultimaker 3, they aren't taking any extra steps to lock people into their system. You can still use whatever materials or software you want, you can kind of mess with the hardware, but you're likely not going to see someone else base their 3D printer design on the Ultimaker 3, since there are some legal question marks to it. Well, share, sharing the files under the license that allows others to modify it, and in our case with the GPL, uh, I, I know it's not a perfect license for the for the hardware, but I mean, I don't I. 
I don't think I will ever enforce enforce the stuff. It's just more about the ideology that you know. I like the I like the idea that when we make something and and give it away, and somebody wants to sell it, they should they should give uh, the improvements back as uh, under the same license. So Prusha brought up a crucial point here. You can publish all the source files you want if you don't allow people and companies to use them. The most commonly used licenses for true open source projects go something like, here's our source files, you can do with them whatever you want, but for basing your products on our work you have to give credit to us, and with some licenses you will also need to publish your source files for your new product under a license that in turn lets other people take and use your files. Duet3D has always been an open source company and for us it's not just releasing the source files of all of the electronics we design and all of the firmware we design but it's also using open tools because we want to allow our community to get involved and using open tools like KiCad allows everybody in the community who's interested to add to our projects and, and help us develop them further. Of course Duet3D being very closely related to the original Repra project they take open source very seriously and their point of using open tools to design and produce, in this case their electronics, is super important. After all, how many people will be able to afford a software that costs tens of thousands of dollars every year just to view the source files? Like that's crazy. Just look at what Ultimate Designer costs, which is a common electronics design tool, or SolidWorks for mechanical parts. While I was at TCT, I also wanted to ask Zmorph the same questions but they declined the interview, so lastly we have XYZ Printing, a company you wouldn't typically associate with open source, since many of their printers use chipped and proprietary filament cartridges, are locked into their own slice of software which actually generates encrypted G-code files to completely stop you dead in your tracks from messing with anything at all. But they do have a few machines that are marketed with the open source tagline, so let's see what that is all about. I think for an open source 3D printer, that means accessible for users to challenge the 3D printer. So that means that you can adjust a lot of settings and you can use different materials to experiment with the 3D printer. So that's I would consider as an open source 3D printer. Well, okay, I, I don't think they get what open source means at all. Changing settings and being able to use different materials? I, I don't know, man. Moving on, ask whether these companies in fact thought they were an open source company. Let's check it out. So yeah, we, we are open source. Um, and so the majority of our hot ends are released under permissive open source licenses. And the majority of our components are released under permissive open source licenses. That's a switch we recently made. Um, and we've recently gotten rid of the NC clause off of almost all of our products. There are still some on there for half admin reasons and half business strategic reasons um, around things like injection molded products and stuff like that. Um, but no, for example, yeah, the E3D V6 is a fully open source hardware compliant product. Yeah, yeah, uh, we, we share all of our uh, design files, everything for our printers, 3D printers online, and then our, uh, our development files are also shared. So we have a development server, it's devel.lulzbot.com, where anything that our R&D department is working on is shared uh, with the public every 15 minutes. It's hardcore. Well, what was the, what's the point is that uh, Lulzbot is sharing everything. It's hardcore. So Prusa Research is making open source products and software. I think we're definitely open. Um, but there are some things that are not open. For example, the website's uh, source code is not open. So, yes, we have we have things that we do do not share. But um, in general, we try to be as open as we can. Notice how Ultimaker actually avoided the full term open source and instead just used open. I do kind of like that because it means they're not just riding the open source marketing train and using it wherever they see fit. But still, I'm really hoping they're not going down the Makerbot lane and piece by piece locking down their products. It didn't work out too well for Makerbot and after all, it would be a sad day if Ultimaker decided to leave the community aspects of 3D printer development behind altogether. Yes, we publish everything that we uh, design, all of our electronics and that kind of stuff, we publish it on GitHub. You can look up our repositories and, and grab the source file, dig into it and hopefully extend it and add, add to the project, yeah. We do have a product line which has uh, a range of, of open source 3D printer and that is because there is a big group for example, that we call it the maker group, which has a very advanced level, knowing about the 3D printers, knowing about the materials, and they are doing bigger projects. So those 
target group, it's very important to supply them a 3D printer that, that they can challenge for the projects and that they can print different materials at different temperatures and different settings that they can adjust by themselves. XYZ Printing again uses the term open source 3D printer way too liberally. Just because you can change a setting here and there does not make your printer open source. That is pure marketing bullshit. Alright, next up I asked everyone whether they were actively using other open source projects like are you using free Libre software to design things or are you basing your work on other open source projects? What I was trying to get at here was that entire attribution part. For example, are you using the Marlin firmware in your machines and do you have the guts to admit that your product draws from other projects? The original inspirations for my first work in Hot Hands were based off of Nophead, Chris Palmer's work, and I've got to give him a, you know, he taught me everything I knew about Hot Hands when I started making Hot Hands. Um, and we moved on and we evolved those designs and we, you know, talked about them in forums. And But Chris Palmer's open discourse, um, the work of RepRap Pro, um, and I have to, you know, give credit to those guys there. Um, I, our products are built, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And I make no bones about that. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, at LF Objects, we use all open source, uh, well, actually free software to run the company. So from our creative department to our mechanical engineers to our electrical engineers, all of the software that we use internally is free software. Um, we are using open source tools. Um, I realize that the more and more we are also using proprietary tools because sometimes they are just developed better for the work that we do. Um, what we always do is we want to look outside, so if people have great ideas, I always want to put them on the, on the, on the, on the stage, because it's their idea, uh, and I know that we don't have to think of everything ourselves in our, uh, our company, so I always emphasize that uh, um, the not invented here syndrome, I don't want to have that in my company. We have to look outside, and we have to embrace if people have great ideas. Uh, absolutely, so the, the Duet Electronics was developed by myself and Adrian Bauer, a few years ago um, when he was releasing the original Ormerod uh, printers and so it's been open source from the beginning um, and we released it under the CERN open source hardware license from from the beginning um, so yes everything that we've done has started from an open source background and RepRap itself started from an open source background. Uh, yes uh, so we are using uh, for example OpenSCAD which is open source to model the printer, uh, QCAD to design the, the 2D parts, uh, FreeCAD to do the 3D models, uh, we are using some uh, some stuff like the Ultimachine boards, which are also open source. We are building on them. Uh, we are using we are using the Marlin firmware. Uh, well, yeah. So the, the whole the whole pipe. Yeah, but everything is shared, uh, shared back. So far, so good. Looks like there is some good understanding of how attribution should work, and that you don't have to reinvent everything yourself if you can draw from the huge pool of existing open source projects. Well, we do have a product that is developed by XYZ Printing, so all parts is manufactured by our own and spare parts are available. So in this case, our printers are not able to be matched with, for example, an extruder from an external manufacturer. Um, I, I guess I should point out that I did ask all these companies the exact same question, so, uh, well... Okay, open source and sharing and all is, is all good, but why is it even important to keep sharing designs and software as open source? Yeah, why is it important? Um, because it's the sharing of not just what you are doing, but the how you are doing it. And the, the how you are doing it, aka the source code, um, is what inspires innovation in others and gives you that shoulder of a giant to stand on. Without that, you don't have what you have to stand on. Um, and so, we are proud of people like the Prometheus Hot End, who, you know, I have a, you know open conversation with Eric Summit and say like, I really like his product, and he really likes ours, and he's now making bits that incompatibilize with our product. And like, that's cool, and it's cool to see that people now make third-party nozzles for E3D Hot Ends with like cool weird features like rubies in them, and like. That's amazing to see. I never thought I would see someone like making a plugin for my product. I'm like, it's amazing. Um, so it's important to us. It's important to our customers as well. You know, we've got some of the biggest open source printer manufacturers like Lulzbot, Aleph Objects, Prusa Research on board. Clearly, that's important to them, you know, and 
they're some of the biggest players in the industry, the most successful players in the industry as well. But we also have Ultimaker, not a client of ours, but also an open source hardware company. And they're one of the biggest players. I, open source is winning. It's a proven winning, profitable strategy um, that especially in an industry where you make stuff, you modify stuff, and there isn't one product to rule them all for all applications is absolutely necessary. Well, it, the 3D printing industry exists because of collaboration and because of open source uh, licensing. So it's important because it's, uh, it's what has allowed the innovation to, to happen so quickly. And if we want that to continue, um, it's important. Um, also, in in this day and age, with uh, you know concerns about privacy and concerns about actually owning the things that you buy, um, if things aren't open source, you don't know how they work. You can't fix them. Um, people, you know, in the outside can turn things off or on or change the way they operate without your permission and. Fundamentally, that's a problem, I think. I think open source uh, is very important because it, um, it opened up uh, the, the, the whole space. The, the, if, you, if you look back, <coughs> sorry, the last couple of years, open source really accelerated the whole 3D printing scene by that far that it is an, uh, a, a big showcase of how open source can accelerate. And we need that acceleration. We have really have to face some problems and we need to solve them. So we need innovation, so we need to share. So it's important to us because we're a relatively small company and the, one of the reasons why we've managed to produce such sort of advanced electronics so quickly is because we've harnessed, as I said, the creativity of our community. Well, I, I think it's uh, much, much more effective to develop stuff this way. Uh, you don't have to spend so much time with protecting your ideas and uh, you know just waste time on doing patents instead you, you should do what we do and we, we spend most of our time in making the the printer better i left out the response from xyz it had very little to do with what i was even asking for so to reiterate it's probably less important for the end user to own an open source machine because let's face it how many of you are actually going to use those source files to mod a printer or to build your own one based on it where it does matter is for example changing things in the firmware which is a relatively simple job if your manufacturer publishes their version of modeling which they are required to do but the same task becomes a huge ordeal when they don't for 3d printing in its entirety the idea of sharing designs and knowledge in a way where others can build on it and don't need to start from scratch every time is a huge deal for how fast the industry as a whole can move forward I'm personally a strong advocate of freely sharing knowledge where it profits everyone and that doesn't even mean you have to make every single detail of your business public like Loadspot does. It's hardcore. It can often just be enough to document the work and make it clear that others can freely use it. And this is, this is not a one-way ticket. You give some, but you gain so much more by being able to tap into all the other open source projects out there. So let me know in the comments below or in the community forums, do you look to support open source products when you buy stuff? Or are you okay with buying essentially the same machines we had five years ago because companies started sharing less and less? Thanks to E3D for sponsoring the trip to TCT this year and also huge thanks to all my supporters on Patreon. Without you, this, this wouldn't be possible. This month, special thanks to Oliver Nicholas, Neil Youngberg, Adam Hunger, Christoph Schacht, Woody Boyd, Raphael Rema, Guni W, Remco Katz, Keith Austin, Sheriff Eid, and Philip Gock, as well as all these lovely people and everyone else on Patreon. Thank you. As always, please do leave a rating on this video, whether it's a thumbs down or a thumbs up. Get subscribed and hit that bell, and then I'll see you in the next one.